This is John Moxley, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. All right, so Jackie Jones here, and I'm joined by the hardcore legend Mick Foley, and he's going to be appearing this week and this Sunday at the Sandwich Taverna here in Cape Cod, Sandwich, Massachusetts, and you get your ticket information at Sinners and Saints Tattoo, or you can call 508-295-1366. Now, how, if someone's not familiar with uh, your stand-up, uh, how would you explain it? It is a uh, wrestling-centric storytelling show, but it's uh, accessible to non-fans as well. So for wrestling fans, there's no need to worry about uh, me embarrassing myself with setups and punchlines. And for non-fans, uh, they'll, they'll have a much better time than they're, than they're expecting. If they're dragged against their will by uh, their uh, loved one, they will end up having a very good time. Yeah. Now, do you ever uh, change like uh, the stories you tell depending on what type of audience you're in front of? If you are like oh, in front of like yeah, a primary, sure. Person? Yeah. I mean, every show is kind of a unique experience. I have uh, usually one story that I know I'll tell going into a show, and then I'll I will think about uh, the makeup of the audience. In this case, it's an all ages show, so so clearly I'm going to keep it, um, you know, in the PG <laughs> PG mm-hmm. area. We're not going to go strict G. Uh, there may be one bad word in an hour and 20 minute show, and I think that's uh, acceptable to any parent who ventures in. Um, but I'll, uh, you know, I'll try to think of things that happen to me, uh, you know, on the Cape. Uh, you know, I'll be coming from the gathering of the Northeast Santas, <laughs> so I should have some Santa experiences. A couple of the uh, Santa's top helpers will be in the you know, uh, we'll be in the crowd, and so uh, it'll be a unique experience. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar at all with uh, Sal Lizard? Uh, he's a Santa. Oh, yeah, yeah. I read oh, awesome. Sal's book, sure, yeah. Do you know Sal? Yeah, I know him uh, very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sal, uh, I, I, one of the lines uh, from Sal's book uh, did me uh, very well last year when a young child pulled on my beard, and I gave him the <laughs> that's the way Santa's beard grows line. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know Sal. He's a good guy. Yeah. Now, yeah, since you are, you know, uh, so into the, the Santa culture, I don't know even if that's a term, but uh, what yeah, were your thoughts sure on uh, Santa Claus? Oh, oh the wrestler Santa yeah, Claus? Yeah, yeah. Not a big fan of the evil Santa characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a guy, you know, like, I don't want to see a Santa slasher film, uh, although when my son... Uh, uh, dressed up as an elf, and we snapped a photo for the 365-day Show Me the Santa Challenge. Uh, you know, <laughs> if you want to check it out, <laughs> every day I snap a photo of myself wearing something uh, Santa-esque every day for an entire year. And so when he put on like a mask and uh, pretended to behead Santa, I thought, you know what? He's 11. If he <laughs> wants to, <laughs> that's that's acceptable. There's no, but I uh, know like, I'm not a Santa's slave fan or silent night, deadly night. I don't, uh, I, I love the Santa culture, but I like it to be, uh, you know, about giving and uh, happiness, not about beheadings. Mm-hmm, I understand. Now, uh, I know, you know, I know you're always talking about, uh, Christmas, uh, music and whatnot in your, in your books. And, but how did you get involved in like, uh, in the uh, Santa, uh, area? <laughs> You know, I had a chance, I, I, I've had this year-round Christmas room for 15 years, and a word is spread among uh, the, the other wrestlers that, uh, yeah, look, Nick's a nice guy, but don't don't get caught on the road with him. He listens to Christmas music year-round, so, uh, you know, it's kind of become a legendary. But this uh, director uh, was doing a movie uh, where he followed five of Santa's top helpers throughout the course of a um, a year to see what they do in the uh, you know the in the off season, and uh, he'd heard that I was a big fanatic and wanted to see if I wanted to get a chance to really do it. You know, not just throw on a you know a beard from a costume store, uh, even if it was for something great like entertaining the troops, but to really go through the process and sit in that chair and have kids come in, you know, who believe. And so I did it and I loved it and. Uh, um, I've come on board as a producer on the film and, uh, you know, actually would like to show up for late night editing sessions. Uh, tomorrow we visit WWE headquarters to see if we can't, uh, get, uh, the use of <laughs> my wrestling footage for a cheaper cost than, uh, they had, they've originally, uh, 
uh, you know, put out there. So it's a, it's a, it's a, so it's a, you know, it's a process. But uh, we believe when this movie hits a theater, uh, and it will have a little theatrical run, and then it will be on like you know demand and, and DVDs and that type of thing, that uh, people are really going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, website you could go to uh, check out information on that? Sure. Yeah, um, uh, I'll direct people. You know, so because I know offhand, it's mm -hmm. you know at Twitter, it's I am Santa Movie, and if you go there, it'll direct you right to it. On Facebook, it is uh, I am Santa Claus. Um, I don't. I, I believe it's I am Santa Claus dot com, but somebody else might have had that domain. So uh, if you go through social media, you can be directed uh, uh, to the to the website. Mm -hmm. Now, I, Don't get me I, wrong. This is not going to be an all Santa show, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it is, you know, and it is strange that. I, but it is funny. The last time uh, I was in the area of performance about three years ago, and uh, I've gotten a lot better since then. I'll, I'll go out on a limb and, and say that. Not that people saw a bad show. They saw a pretty good show. But this will be really good. And I had a tour T-shirt made up. And oh, the nice. cool thing about it is. Uh, um, on the back of the tour T-shirt, like a rock and roll thing, I had, you know, it's Sinners and Saints or Saints and Sinners? Sinners and Roger? Saints. Yeah. Wh which one is it? Sinners and Saints. Sinners and Saints, and uh, then that was followed by the Polar Theater at Santa's Village in Jefferson, New Hampshire, where I walked out to see three- and four-year-olds who knew nothing of me <laughs> as a wrestler. So I had to put together 20 minutes of completely acceptable material for three- and four-year-olds. It was it was not the best of Mick Foley by any means, but we had fun anyway. Yeah. I actually saw that show. Was, I think it was an onset in Massachusetts. And then, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, yeah. then I saw you uh, after that in Chicago at, uh, at Days of the Dead. And uh, I did. I actually enjoyed both shows, but I did think you improved quite a bit from uh, one show to the next. Yeah, and it'll be a lot better. Uh, you know, and this one will be a bit better still. It's like it's like anything. You work at it. Uh, you know, I've referred to it compared to the muscle memory process that like an athlete goes through, where you know a, a pitcher, even if he's got all the tools, won't be brought up to the majors for a certain amount of time because he just needs to constantly throw so that. You know that that uh, it becomes part of the muscle's memory, and uh, uh, so now you know instead of having you know 50 hours of stage time in when you saw me, the, you know the, the first time, or uh, you know uh, 150 when you saw me at Days of the Dead. It's like now I've been up there like you know compiled lots of stage time, and, uh, and you know I, it does regardless of whether I go up there with the best material in the world or stuff I'm just making up off the top of my head, you know, I can, I can deliver those stories in a better fashion because I've got a lot of work on it. Mm -hmm. And you called me an ugly man at, at the Days of the Dead show, yes. Well, that's saying something. Was <laughs> I, uh, is there a, <laughs> were you wearing, uh, were you attempting to be ugly? Um, I don't know how to answer that. I was just, uh, I was, I was filming you and, uh, and, and you, you, you didn't want to be filmed. And then you added, uh, I forget the exact line, but you basically called me an ugly man. Oh, an yeah. ugly man. Yes, yes. Which you apologized for afterwards. So, so I did, okay. That's uncharacteristic. You yeah. know, I just uh, I want to make the world a better place, yeah. not point out uh, your flaws, no matter how <laughs> ugly you may be. <laughs> right. And I was wearing a, uh, a Wanted Dead shirt the other day, and someone asked me if I was you. So then I was like, well. <laughs> well, then in, if you remind people of. <laughs> <laughs> you can't uh, be too handsome. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, I do have a couple of wrestling questions. Was um, I know you had some interaction with uh, John Moxley, Dean Ambrose before he went up to WWE, and uh, did yeah. you see um, before he's part of the Shield? Did you see something uh, special in him? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, mostly things I've been told about him. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I talked to people and they saw him as a. Uh, uh, a guy who could be a huge star in the future, and so uh, I was given a unique chance to try to build something with him. And then uh, Mother Nature <laughs> did not cooperate me, and I was uh, not uh, cleared to wrestle. Mm -hmm. But uh, and that's what happened there. Yeah, is it? Uh, you know, I think right now there's a lot of uh, great talent in WWE uh, being on TV now. You have the Wyatts and uh, and the Shield. Uh, would you agree with that? Oh yeah, yeah. I love the new talent. I think they've done a great job. WWE had uh, 
for all the you know the flack so they sometimes get for bringing in uh, you know guys from the past to headline uh, shows. Uh, you know they've done this amazing job of making uh, huge new stars. You know from the developmental area and they come in. They you know they really uh, have you know faith and realize that building guys is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. And uh, so if you look at the you know the card uh, you know for upcoming. Uh, Extreme Rules, which no one will actually be watching. Well, you know what? They can go yes. to my show, which is at 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. I actually noted and that. And yeah. finish up just in time to go to the uh, uh, watch the pay-per-view. Right. Although we do have the uh, the post-show meet and greet, which uh, comes along with the ticket. Yeah. Well, pl- if you have the network, you can watch it on your on your phone while you're in line for the meet and greet. And that's true. Exactly. We can find. Yeah. Uh, there's. Really, no reason not to be there. From what I understand, there's not too many tickets left. He's, uh, you know, uh, uh, Roger has done a great job of uh, promoting the show in town, and uh, we were looking for a packed house. Yeah, yeah that's a great venue too, and you get a nice steak dinner and, wa- and watch you uh, do your thing, and it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, real quick though, uh, what what did you think of the Wyatt's opening uh, segment on, on Raw this week? Ah, it was wonderful. Mm-hmm. I know some people uh, it was a little freaky, but that was the point. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> it was uh, something I believe uh, wrestling fans will remember for uh, you know it'll go down as a great segment. There, I'd never seen anything like it. It was so good that I wish I had done it when I was mankind. Like, uh, you know, uh, I, I was a big believer in the uh, <laughs> juxt- juxtaposing uh, innocence and creepiness and. You know, uh, and sometimes I even did it in song. So, uh, uh, you know, whereas I sang um, Close to You by the Carpenters mm-hmm. in creepy fashion, you know, he, he sings, uh, it, you know, i got the whole world in my hands. And it's uh, really effective, really a great character. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was uh, one of the best segments uh, in years on Raw. It was fantastic. So uh, this Sunday, and we can uh, check you out at the Sandwich Caverna, and I'll be there. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, we'll have uh, some of the links up on the website so people can get uh, the information easy. That sounds great. Uh, I'll see you guys out there. Can't promise next time I'll be out there uh, in that area of the Cape. And so uh, if I may say with the hard sell, if someone's on the fence and they like me but don't know what to expect, just trust me by this point. You know, I, I'm going to be better than you think. <laughs> and you will have you will have a lot of fun yeah, if that, you that, make the choice yeah, to go. That was a hell of a hard sell. I will be better than you think. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing, there's a lot of, uh, we find out there's a lot of guys going solo. And for every guy who goes solo, there's got to be like three or four people who are thinking about it. But you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to go by myself. Hey, I I used to go by myself to places all the time, and sure, people thought it was a little strange, but I got to do what I wanted to do without without other people telling me what I should and should not like. And so, if you're a guy listening, and you're you know, it's all ages show, uh, and and you feel like watching a wrestler, and your friends are you know are are on the fence, check it out. It's a it's a very warm uh, atmosphere. I tell some grisly stories, but it's done with a sense of warmth and. Uh, it is acceptable for anyone, probably age twelve or no older. So, so come on out and be part of the action. Yeah, and uh, you know, DDP uh, he made a surprise appearance at the show I saw in Chicago. What has, has there any been, any wrestlers? Uh, what have their opinions been of your shows? And has anyone said, "Oh, you should, why did you have to tell that story or anything?" No, like that? no, no. But you see, I, you know, even the I mean, DDP made a surprise story where I was talking about his propensity for being naked in the hotel room. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's about as, you know, and it's a story told with great affection for the guy, not for his nudity. <laughs> and so uh, people are really cool. I don't tell stories just to be mean. You yeah. know, I, I tell funny stories about people I like. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, bye. bye. Hey, Monkey, it's me, DDP, Diamond Dallas Page, and you're listening to In Your Head Online.com. Don't even think about getting off, or you will feel fuck.